Hey, what's up guys? This is Mike Aaron Kohler again. I'm the course director for Introduction Editing and Visual Effects. Good to be with you again one more time. Okay, what we're going to be dealing with today, guys, is actually basically how we can take a uh, film or a project that we've created in Final Cut Pro and actually do a proper compression on it using the compressor application. So to do this, let's get started by opening up Final Cut Pro, which I actually have open right here. And let's take a look at this small project that I have for you guys today. This is actually uh, scene 14 from a project uh, called Bruno's, which actually began as a web series, and now it looks like it's an actual pilot uh, that we're going to be pitching to Fox. This was a piece that I had shot in Los Angeles, and if we kind of click through it real fast, this is a scene that takes place at the end of the pilot. Uh, we have a character named Wong Li, and he's actually phoning his father. You'll see we have a couple of nice little matching action edits right here. Yeah, that looks pretty nice, right? Okay, you know, starting one action, of course, in uh, shot A and then continuing into shot B. I tried to do that a, a couple different times. Me as an editor, that's really what I'm looking for. But anyway, getting back to the idea of compression, we all know that to get a, uh, a project out of Final Cut Pro, the way we actually do it in class is to go File and Export QuickTime Movie. That's going to create a Final Cut Pro QuickTime, which is going to work great in DVD Studio Pro particularly for us that have Apple programs, okay, or Apple computers. We could also do uh, export using a QuickTime conversion. That's not bad as well, okay, that's nice for our friends that have PCs that would like to read a QuickTime file. But the best way to actually compress our audio and video is to go export using compressor, okay. Like I said, Final Cut Pro does a good job of this using QuickTime Movie for Final Cut Pro QuickTime and just a regular QuickTime using QuickTime conversion. But to get a really fine compression, we're going to go export using compressor. And the benefit of this is actually this program is completely built around the idea of compression. Compression as a whole is the idea of retaining graphical quality but also being able to retain a small bit rate. In case we want a high graphical quality and small bit rate or small file size. This is particularly important for things like um, having your project on a website, being web hosted, or uh, possibly you know broadcast or any type of distribution that's really where the idea of compression comes into play and really what type of file format do we need our project to be in is it going to be on DVD is it going to be on web where's it going to be and that's where compressor really shines so compressor is its own unique application it does come with the Final Cut Pro Studio box which is exciting and it does look a little bit different but I'll tell you what we can boil down compressor into two different things and if we look actually in the upper left port part of the window, we can see here we have scene 14, Wong Lee phones home. That was the name of it in Final Cut Pro. And it's asking us to drag settings and destinations here. And that, by the way, is what compressor really needs. Two things, settings and destination. Okay, so to do this, we can actually find down here below, there's a little settings tab. And in that, we have settings and destinations. Okay, let's first deal with settings. Okay, setting really is asking us what type of output do we need? Are we going to DVD? Are we going to web? Are we doing uh, DVD compression? What are we talking about? I'll tell you the most likely ones we're going to use. If we actually scroll down here, we're going to see different um, formats. Okay, Let's click on where it says Apple. And under Apple, we have Apple devices. So if you're actually trying to prep your project for Apple TV or iPod video, you can use those right there for Apple devices. Okay, Or for DVD, you can click on that folder. And I would probably recommend DVD best quality 90 minutes. And there you go. You could have an MPEG-2 compression with Dolby Digital Professional Audio. Okay, so you could highlight those by clicking on holding shift. And you can actually drag those up to where it says drag settings and destination. Okay, that's the one we're going to use today because that one's going to work, work really well with DVD Studio Pro, which will actually do a MPEG-2 compression. So we're kind of doing the job for it to make sure that we have a beautiful compression as we build our DVD. Some of the other ones that you guys might like real fast, let me just condense the DVD folder group, is actually under formats. Okay, Under formats, you'll see a nice one we have here is QuickTime. There's five different QuickTime settings that it has by default here. Okay, we have our Apple Intermediate Codec. The one also a lot of people like is H.264. Okay, this is a common source resolution frame rate. We also have uncompressed 10-bit, which potentially might be useful if we have a high-definition video. Okay, we're talking something like 1080p right there. Might be uncompressed 10-bit, and that might work pretty well. But anyway, pick the proper uh, format that you guys like, and then click and drag them right up here. Next thing we need is our source. 
Okay, to have your source, okay, you can click on where it says destinations down here and click on where it says Apple. Okay, source might be your current source location, probably not. Or we could also put it to the desktop. The user movie folder, as in my case, would be Mac HD user, Micah Kohler, movies, or a cluster storage unit. Or I'll show you another way right now where we can add actually another setting. Sorry, we could add another destination. So what I like to do is I'll click on where it says source. Then I'm going to go up to target and say destination and I'm gonna to go to other because check it out most of the time I want to actually save my destination as an external hard drive that it hasn't accessed just yet so like I said we're going target destination other then I'm gonna pick out my lacy hard drive which you guys might have a lacy drive or a Maxter or Western Digital whatever hard drive you have is great I might even create a new folder right here there's a new folder button and I might call this I call it mica compressed files. That sounds good. Or Micah compression. Anywhere that you want to label it just so you can find it a little bit later would be great. So I'm going to create that new folder, Micah compressed files. I'll hit open. Okay, And I'm going to do the same thing for my source on my other guy. The thing is of course if we do an MPEG-2 compression we're actually compressing the video with MPEG-2 and then also the audio under Dolby Digital Professional. So I actually have to set the source twice. But that's okay. So for this guy again I'm going to go target, destination, other, and let's click on the Lacey Drive for me, and Micah Compressed Files. And I'll hit Open. Now once I have those two things, right, once I have my source target okay, and my format, I'm ready to go. When you're ready to actually compress your files, click on Submit right down here. Okay, it'll ask you, okay, the name of your compressed file, okay, I'm going to cluster it on this computer. Technically, if we were doing a major compression, we might have multiple computers compressing multiple files, and that's okay. But for me, I only have one computer, and that's this guy right here, and I'm going to click Submit. And I can actually watch the compression under the batch monitor right here. I'm going to open that guy up right here, and I'm going to click on this computer, okay, because like I said, I'm actually just compressing files on this computer at the moment and you guys can actually watch your file being compressed right here you'll see this was actually a job that I started and stopped so I'm just gonna delete him right there by clicking on his X okay and I canceled that guy and this is the job I'm working on right here I can actually click on its twirly and here's the scene we're actually dealing with we have the video compression and the audio compression it's gonna tell me how much time has elapsed if I click on I for information, I could technically pause it if I really wanted to, but I think that's okay. I don't mind watching it. It's kind of fun to watch a slight little bit of compression right here.